Hello all and welcome to a new episode of the Horror Countdown Podcast. I'm your host Donna Nelly and tonight on for our show I'm joined by actor and filmmaker Jonathan Pangborn or Joshua Pangborn I'm sorry. No worries. Yeah yeah welcome. Thank you so much for having me tonight. Oh, uh, it's a it's a it's exciting to be here and I, I I could go by Jonathan I suppose it works for me. <laughs> well, I mean, now let's just, um, you know, keep it legal for um, tax purposes. Um, let's just uh, make sure it's Joshua. That makes sense with tax season coming up and all too. So. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, got to stay up to date on that. Uh, you know, don't want any false false returns and stuff. But um, <laughs> for our uh, show tonight, we are going to be looking at our top 10 fat characters in genre films. So this was uh, your topic. Let's uh, get a little background on the uh, choice and uh, selection process. Sure. Um, so I am a uh, creator who focuses on telling queer and body positive or fat positive stories. So for me, I'm always really focused on how is what kind of what kinds of plus size characters are represented in media and where can uh, how, what do they do? How do you see them? Um, is it a positive portrayal? Is it a negative portrayal? What kind of is there a portrayal at all? I mean, if you're watching the CW, usually not. But I mean, it's it's uh, it's an important topic, I think, for me, because I really focused on um, looking for representation in places where I didn't see it as a, as a kid growing up was a fan of genre, uh, genre horror, a genre of uh, filmmaking and genre stories. And uh, it, we're starting to see a little bit of a change now, but it's, it's still something that I think is uh, hard to really get the kind of representation that we want to see and I, when we do see it it's really exciting so oh um so yeah um i mean we were talking about this just slightly before we came on but um for the rest of this yeah um i i think the fact that um you, you and i both we were talking about having uh, just a bunch of struggles trying to come up with this i think that kind of speaks to what you were saying about getting acceptance out and you know awareness of it out there because yeah this was a struggle i i gotta say this was kind of a tough one i mean i i kind of just found 10 and was just like okay yeah good enough well that, that's it i mean you you can google like almost anything and find a list of something like top right. 10 crazy fathers in movies or top 10 blonde women in movies but when you try to do like like the top 10 plus size characters in horror you get nothing <laughs> nothing comes up exactly yeah i mean I, I i think i kind of i was like joking about this i kind of did a mixture just to round out 10 um my list includes both characters and actors because it mm -hmm. because just i mean like you said just you know there's so little of it out there because i mean you know just speaking from genre experience most of them are just you know the fat comic relief that you know pulls a prank or two and then just gets killed off like the first or second death yeah, absolutely. They're usually the, the first or second death and they're usually stupid or loud or obnoxious. And it's uh, that, that's usually the, the I mean, that's trope. That's what you have. So, right. Yeah. And that's kind of exactly what a lot of I found was is a lot of people, you know, speaking out about it, but not doing much anything else. It was just like, OK, you know, I have found like three or four articles about, you know, is the horror genre, you know, demonizing fat people or is, you know, being the fat person like, you know, the death sentence in a genre film, like something mm -hmm. like that. But yeah, to actually like come up with like, you know, our 10 best. I mean, maybe I cheated on some of my selections. I don't know. But yeah, uh, I, I figured this would be um, a lot less challenging than it was but yeah, yeah um, I, when i proposed it to you i thought oh i'm gonna i know this this is this is my genre this is my topic i know it. I'm gonna right. find I want. <laughs> and i'm like wait a minute 10 this is hard this exactly is yes i mean thought. yeah so like i said i mean i when i was doing my research for this i ended up doing a mixture of both actors and characters so um yeah um i i think doing this and bringing a little bit more light to it would probably be in our best interest so <laughs> Totally. I'm really excited that we get to do this because because of this reason, especially so. Right. Yeah, exactly. So um, I guess let's uh, might as well start from there. Let's uh, start off with number 10. All right. Um, so I didn't necessarily put them in any particular order, but I think that uh, 
person who does take that comedic uh, plus size character that we talked about, but sort of spins it around a little bit and lasts for the whole movie. Um, I went with a character from Beetlejuice, uh, Otho. Mm, nice. Yeah. Good choice. <laughs> He's a lot of fun. He gets to be, uh, he gets to be a little bit more um, uh, present throughout the film. He doesn't, he doesn't, he never even gets killed either, but, and he's also, he's also, uh, I like him because he, I, he has that, that queer coded representation as well. So that, that's mm-hmm. another uh, thing that obviously I gravitate towards uh, with the, with the kind of material that I make. So, uh, so yeah, o- Otho number 10 for me. Nice, solid choice. Um, my number 10, um, uh, again, I'm kind of like you, mine aren't necessarily in order. I just was just like, okay, I've got like 11 or 12 choices. Let's just, you know, okay, I'll take you, 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 and you. Um, so my number 10, uh, this one is actually an actor, not a particular character, but um, I went with uh, Tromo legend, Joe Flyshaker. Oh, yes, yes. Um, oh, he's great. Yeah, he is. Um, yeah, he's a lot of fun. Um, I always used to like his uh, little cameo appearances. Um, I have memorable roles in uh, Tromeo and Juliet, um, Terror Firmer. He's got a fantastic role. Um, oh, Poultry Geist. He has a memorable little cameo there where his uh, butt uh, plugs up a toilet and uh... I love Poultry Geist. That's such a fun movie. And I, I, <laughs> I, I, I can't Geist. believe I forgot about him. Yeah, Poultry Geist is a lot of fun. That's uh, that one would probably be maybe my favorite alongside the original Toxic Avenger. Oh, as a, for sure. Yeah, as like my favorite um, trauma film. I, I I love Poultry Geist. That movie's a lot of fun. So that kind of that got the mind rolling and was like, okay, but yeah, he's not really in it that much. So I can't really say he's the best, but then it just like reminded me of like the various little cameos that he does. So I I kind of cheated and was like, okay, I'll just take him as an actor. Maybe that'll be close enough to work but i think it works for me i mean uh yeah. i i had a chance to work with lloyd a kaufman on uh on a, one of my projects earlier on in my uh career and uh he, he's a he's a delightful man who really gives a lot of great opportunities to people who who who, who look uh non-traditional so uh so i think it's exciting to to have uh this kind of guy on our list jill fleischaker nice all right so uh with that let's move on to our number nine I would have to go with, for number nine, I went with uh, uh, the character of young Ben Haskam from It. Hmm. Uh, before he gets all sexy, when he gets older because he loses weight. Uh, um, but I, I think that it's, uh, he, he's, a, he's a strong character who actually, uh, depending on the version you're watching, uh, is, is, uh, is, I mean, he's a romantic. He has a lot of creative ideas. He um he is i think a, a a good role model for a young plus size person watching horror to see themselves in and not see themselves like die right away <laughs> so yeah. uh, it's been ages since i've seen the original the original miniseries version so uh yeah he completely slipped my mind because I, I i i know the um the more recent two-part adaptation more mm-hmm. just because i've seen that one more recently and it's been ages since i've seen the miniseries so yeah, that's a good call. I, I I forgot that he was like that in the original. That's a good one. All right. Um. So my number nine. Um. This one is a character. I went with uh, Timmy from Cheerleader Camp. Ah, uh, see, th- that's fantastic. Uh, I um, I posed this question uh to my audience on uh, on my on my uh, live stream that I do every week. So I wanted to get some ideas because I was having trouble and. That is one of the, one of the guests said that name, so uh, that's uh, that that <laughs> character definitely resonates with people who yeah. are plus size characters in uh, in horror. So that's yeah, uh, a um, great choice. Yeah, he, he's a lot of fun. Yeah, he he definitely makes um, the first part of the film far more enjoyable until the kills start. Um, yeah, yeah I, I'm not the hugest fan of uh, Cheerleader Camp, but um, yeah, he's probably I would say one of my favorite parts, at least um, for the first half. Um, I, I really like some of his pranks. I mean, his intro is absolutely legendary. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, just getting his butt caught in the door window and then farting on the camp counselor. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's been ages. Since I think I saw Chile. I haven't seen Chile Camp for probably over 10 years. <laughs> yeah, that was, yeah, it, it's probably, it's been a little bit less. I saw it a little bit more recently than that. But yeah, it's been a good while. And 
um, he's still one of the few things I remember about it. Um, I mean, yeah, the, like I said, the intro is amazing, but some of his pranks are a lot more fun than a lot of people remember, just because I think everybody, when they always think of like the prankster in like slasher films, everybody always goes to Shelly and mm. they always kind of like forget him because I think he had a couple of good pranks as well. So, I mean, I, yeah, I would probably wish I could name a couple of them off, but like I said, it's been a while, so none of them's coming to memory, but. I'm going to have to um, watch this now to, to just uh, remind myself of it because uh, it's been <laughs> ages since I've seen him and this movie. So, yeah, um, that's uh, my number nine. So um, we'll continue on with our number eight. Sure. Uh, for me, for number eight, I went with a classic from Hellraiser. Uh, this is a character uh, and it's not uh, it's not. Pinhead, but it's one of his buddies. Uh, uh, they go. I guess he uses the name Butterball for uh, <laughs> for the the plus size uh, Cenobite. Um, nice, yeah. Um, I mean, it's just an iconic costume and iconic character and everything. It's a lot of fun. I always thought he was the most underutilized of the main four. Um, I mean, Chatterer, the the female Pinhead, and then him. I always thought he was the one that was underutilized. Definitely, I I, I agree. I mean, I mean. Chatter, uh, Chatterer had the great, uh, the great, just like the, the, the special effect voice, the noises and everything, the foley and everything for them. Uh, and of course, Pinhead is Pinhead. So you, you yeah. know, going to want to see him. But I, I think that Butterball could have been uh, utilized more. I, I think he dies after the second one. Yeah, the, the franchise kind of. Um, uh, and then I, the franchise it, gets crazy after that. Yeah, so. the franchise gets crazy. And yeah, I'm, I'm trying to like piece together when everything occurs and it, it, trying to p- portray logic in a Hellraiser timeline is kind of a fool's errand. So let's just let's just kind of leave it at that. But it's um, just best not to. I mean, yeah, just, uh, one one and two is is it? And then yeah, that, that's uh, sort of like I'm not sure what's happening after that. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that's a great one. Um, so my number eight is um I, again I kind of was uh, stretching the rules a little. I think this character may fall more into chunky than fat. But I went with uh, Krill from Bloodfest. Oh, I don't think I know this character. Okay, so um, uh, Bloodfest is kind of a recent one. I think it's either 2018, 19, it, it, 17, 18, or 19. It's somewhere in there. But um, it's one of the, uh, it, it's one of a film about a group of people who go to a um, carnival, like a, a like a attraction. Mm-hmm. And they realize that the owner is out to kill him and he has all of his um, cronies disguised as like the workers at the carnival. And then they just mm. start killing everybody one by one and they have to survive the night. So, um, well, I, I chose Krill because one, he's one of the survivors. So mm-hmm. that's, a, you know, a positive aspect right there. But he's also like the traditional comic relief. He gets, you know, his jokes in. He gets a lot of um, fun time. But the other part is that he's actually one that even though he he does survive he does get attacked and sacrifices himself mm. so i gave him a little bit of um bonus points for that because as i said you know he does sacrifice himself to get to get let the others get away and he ends up surviving because of it so oh cool yeah there's so, there's there's like like from 20 like 18 to now there's been like seven different movies with that sort of setup where like the kids go to a haunted carnival and there's serial killers all in the carnival and everything. It's, it's so yeah. Um, it's so interesting that that's, that's like the, 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 yeah, the there, cause there's, yeah, there's another one that came out right around the same time called Hellfest. Yeah. That one I've seen. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I think that one kind of stole the thunder because that one I think played at limited to theaters, whereas mm. Bloodfest went to VOD. Gotcha. So I think, so I think it kind of um, over. I think it kind of like overshadowed just because there was like a little bit more exposure to it. But yeah, if you can check out Bloodfest, it's a lot of fun. I really like. That's it. exciting. I'm I'm already excited. I got something to watch now. I, I mean, uh, that, that's <laughs> that's that's the main purpose of reading tonight was to see anything new that I didn't know. So. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All awesome. right. Yeah. So uh, let's uh, carry on with our number sevens. I would go with now. This is this is definitely a comic relief, uh, but I think the whole movie is a comic relief movie. Uh, I went with uh, Dale from Tucker and Dale versus Evil. I forgot about him. I I, I, I kept saying I, I kind of I was a little bit worried about chunky versus fat. So I, I mean I I kind of like was like stretching it with um, the character from Bloodfest. But yeah, I, I I always I never thought of him for to fit for this. That's a good one. 
Tyler, Tyler Labine is, is is I mean he's he's a he's a huge genre actor to begin with. I mean doing Reaper and doing uh, doing this and doing a couple other projects. But well, um, I forget the one on Hulu they did where he was the medium on Hulu. Uh, but uh, but yeah, yeah, I mean Dale from Tucker and Dale. He's he's. I mean, if you if you haven't watched it, which I'm, I know you haven't, but I mean, if, if yeah. anyone who's listening hasn't watched, it, you definitely should find this movie because it's it is is just takes all the tropes of 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 a, of a slasher film and turns it on their on its head, and it, it's just it's a hysterical from the beginning to end. It's it's just a great watch, and and Dale is a great uh he's he's kind of the romantic lead of the movie actually, which is very unusual for a for a, a fat character. Um, yeah, that's a good one. If I would have, I I can't believe I didn't think of that. That's a good choice. Yeah, yeah, because uh, yeah, and Tyler Labine in general, I guess, if we, we broadened it from from Dale to just the, the actor as well, um, yeah. is, a, is a good genre uh, representation. So, yeah, good point. Um, all right, so my number seven is uh, Crazy Fat Ethel, but I mean, I'm talking the remake, not the original. I'll talk about the the original in a minute. Mm. But I mean the remake. I think it came out. Uh, again, my memory is kind of shut, so my dates are kind of getting mixed up here. I, I want to say 2015 or 16, maybe a little bit later, somewhere in that area. But um, uh, basically, uh, it follows the same format as the original. A woman gets out of a mental hospital and begins going on a killing spree, and you know everybody tries to stop her. But you know, the idea is that you know based on the title, you know, you realize she's on the larger side. So um, I, I really had a lot of fun with this. I mean, I, I know um, the creative crew that did this, um, Dixie Gears, and um, I think her boyfriend, Brian Dorton, created it. So um, I know they're pretty big in the indie scene. Um, I, I've talked with her a couple of times, and I've actually been involved in a couple just like as a, uh, you know, cheerleader type, but, uh, you know, I, I still know them. So yeah, um, this is a fun one. Um, it, it, like I said, it's not as over the top crazy as the original, but it's still a lot of fun. Uh, uh, I, I really think uh, this is going to be, oh, if you're a fan of the original, I really think you're going to like this one because it plays enough homage to sort of like feel like a remake but then it kind of has its own little side thing i'm not really gonna spoil it but oh, nice yeah it, it's it's a fairly solid re um remake um i wouldn't like you know it's not like a top 10 kind of a thing but it, it's a it's a serviceable one you're not gonna you know you're, you're not gonna feel like you wasted your time with it let's just you know say that it's, I on, mean, it's on my list for sure that i've I, uh, I haven't it's one of those things that i haven't found a way to watch it yet uh because it's uh but i it's definitely because i haven't seen it most of the things i've been watching are on prime so that's where i usually oh uh, yeah well, I, I mean like it, yeah like uh, i said i mean uh yeah dixie let me uh watch it a few years ago after um because i interviewed her for another project and she was like well you know you asked me about this have you seen it and i was like no and she gave me a copy of it to watch so awesome was, so yeah uh, that's how i saw it because yeah i I, have, I wouldn't have been able to find it anywhere so that's a great choice, though. I mean, I mean, it definitely, yeah. and it's such a great. I mean, it's it's, a, it's such a great title. So I mean, it it, yeah. it gives you everything you want in a, in a movie title. So yeah, I I I had a lot more. I had a lot of fun with it. Um, I mean, like I said, uh, you know, it's not the original, but mm. it, it it plays enough homage to it, and it does its own thing just enough to where it's not different, but. Yeah, if you like the original, I think you're going to enjoy this one. So that's awesome. I think that's kind of what you want in a remake, or most of the time is is something that's that freshens it, but doesn't like totally, completely, utterly change it. So right, yeah. Cool. All right. Awesome. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, for me, uh, I think we're on seven, right? Uh, number six. Cause... Six. I can't. I can't count. That's okay. Oh, uh, it's no been worries. a very long day. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have to go with uh, my. Uh, uh, just because I want to say her right now, because I, 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 we were talking about uh, crazy women. Uh, Kathy Bates from Misery. Um, anyway. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Um, she's not. She's obviously not a massively uh, large woman, but she, for Hollywood standards, she would be considered a plus size character. Uh, mm -hmm. Especially at that time. Uh, and I mean. Andy Wilkes is just uh, the the epitome of of of, of crazy women, uh, and uh, she 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 really is entertaining from 
the minute the mo- she appears in the movie to the end. I mean, she's the whole reason to watch that movie. Not not to sell the other cast short or anything, but I mean, <laughs> you want to watch it for for Kathy Bates in that movie, so. Yeah, um, I mean, I'm not going to spoil it, but she made my list as well, so. Ah. Uh, yeah, well, um, that's, I, yeah, kind of uh, thinking the same wavelength there. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Um, so my number six is Janet from the Greasy Strangler. Oh, I just watched that movie like two months ago for the first time. Oh, great. yeah, she's a lot of fun. I love I love her character. I think she's she's definitely like the right kind of a person that would make that kind of a movie work. Yeah, she's fun. She's quirky. She's, you know, down for anything, which in that kind of a universe is either a good thing oh, or a bad thing. Depending yeah, on, absolutely. Because if you're not. <laughs> yeah. But, oh, that movie was so, yeah, you, you need somebody like her to, in, in this movie. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, she was actually one of the, the first choices I had for this list. Um, for exactly that reason, she's just that perfect amount of crazy and that kind of a universe and Oh, that movie is just so much fun. It is. It is. It is so so weird and so much fun. I. I. I it's. Uh. I, my. Uh, my boyfriend doesn't usually watch horror movies with me. Um. Uh. He's usually doing something else, but he couldn't take his eyes off of it when he walked in the room and saw I was watching it. So it was like. Uh. This is a. It, it's just. It's such. A, if you haven't watched it again, this is for your listeners. If it's yeah. somebody, it's something to watch because it is a bizarre, bizarre show movie. Absolutely. Bizarre definitely covers it. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, and I guess, I guess bizarre then, would, my bizarre one would be uh, Harvey from Human Centipede 2. Mm. The, 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 the guy who replaces the doctor from, uh, he becomes the man making Centipede in Human Centipede 2. Uh, okay, well, I've, I've only seen the original. I haven't seen the two sequels. Oh, well, un- understandably so. Human Centipede is, is a very bizarre genre. Oh, no, it's just, uh, uh, it's, genre. Uh, no, it's just um, the lack of uh, being able to find them. Oh, that makes sense, too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you can, yeah, you can only really see one um, everywhere. Yeah. It's, uh, but basically what happens in Centipede, Human Centipede 2 is the main character, uh, which what I really love about it is how it reinvents them itself each time it does the it does, a, does a sequel. It sort of reinvents the sort of the, the, what it's trying to do. So this one becomes a very meta movie where Harvey is a, is, is the, a character who is obsessed with the movie Human Centipede and he wants to uh, recreate it. Um, he's he's a short, uh, very, um, very, well, I guess he, he could have played the greasy string, but actually he was, he's very greasy in the movie. He's always, <laughs> always sweating. And he's, uh, but he's, he's, he's very much a short, fat, um, uh, very, very, uh, scary character who's only um, who's recreating the human centipede, uh, which is always <laughs> a very scary thing to do. <laughs> All right, cool. I mean, yeah, um, I've I only been I've only been able to track down the first one, so um, yeah, uh, I I have two and three just um, as curiosity, just because I want to see where the story goes. Um, just I haven't been able to find them, so. I, I haven't seen three yet at all. Um, I, yeah. I, I can't find that one anywhere. Uh, like I said, yeah, j- trying to find these things is a nightmare, at least legally. Yes, yes, because I do not uh, pirate. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I, 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 I figure I can, you know, search these up pretty quickly. But yeah, trying to find these things legally is a nightmare. So um, for my number five, um, I went with a character, um, uh, an actor, I should say. Um, I went with uh, Sean C. Phillips, um, at mm. least in, at least in terms of um, the first part of his career. Um, yeah, um, I remember watching. Uh, he was like one of the first guys that I ever remember like really catching on on YouTube. Um, so I, I remember watching him from there, and uh, when I found out that he was actually uh, you know a genre fan, and he started doing. Um, he started doing appearances and like made like brief cameos and stuff. I was kind of like interested in what he was doing. Mm-hmm. So um, I, I I can't say that he has big roles in many of his films. Um, he's basically like a one scene cameo kind of a person, or you know, it looks like his scenes are filmed in a day kind of a. Mm-hmm. So I, I, it's not necessarily like I you know I mean like with Joe Fleischaker where I can say that you know he has like a solid defined character from like beginning to end, but he's basically just one of those where. Um, I, I think I was looking him up recently, and I think he's got like 
200 some odd credits or something and like 50 and like 100 of them is like in some form of pre-production so oh wow yeah he's one, of, um, he's one of those he's one of those genre faces that just pops up everywhere uh, yeah um well i mean like i said um a, a couple of the 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 couple of the early ones because i know um i mean yeah i i said the early stuff because recently he's lost a lot of weight mm -hmm. so um he's not as big as he was um but um a lot of the earlier stuff i've seen he's five minutes of screen time or you know like he'll pop up in like two or three different places in a movie but it looks like it's all like filmed in one day and like two or two different locations kind of a thing mm -hmm. so he's basically like one of those kinds of actors where he'll like lend himself out and he'll shoot like a cameo role um you know like somebody talking on somebody talking on the phone or like an expert that they look up online and he'll be like the guy that reads over you know given like the backstory of like what they're looking for something like that or even just like a you know random dead body that the, you know the killer ends up killing on the rampage or something like that that's usually kind of like the role that i see him in the most so totally he helps legitimize the project by being in it so exactly yeah um he's yeah he's um like i said he's like one of those kinds of characters especially now i would say but yeah um when he first came out um the first like started in the industry i should say um i i did realize that you know a lot of it wasn't like big roles but i think just because of you know his presence and his like commitment to the industry i i, I at least gave him a little passing message mention i should say totally no that makes sense uh, i mean it's nice to have it's nice to have those faces uh who are who are not just um who are plus size and everything to to appear in in, in these in these roles because you need them you need them to round out the world and uh and also for representation and everything so mm -hmm. all right so uh let's move on to our number four i went with now have you seen the movie pledge on hulu yes that's the one where the um, three freshmen are trying to yeah, pledge a frat yeah, and then the the guy the frat turns homicidal. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, yeah, I think I remember that one. I went with the character Justin, played by Zachary Bird from that movie, because he is mm -hmm. the one of the uh, he he is the I guess the final girl character, uh, and he survives. And he you never see a plus size character uh, being the final girl and surviving in a movie. So this is this was really exciting uh, and. Uh, I was really, really shocked because I expected, I, I mean, you we, we've watched enough horror movies, you know, okay, this is how these movies go. The person, this, this is when this person dies, this is when this person dies, you, you just yeah. sort of expect it. And then I, I was expecting him to die like the first and he, he didn't die at all. I was really excited. I was like, oh, this is, this is interesting casting choices there. Nice. All right. Yeah. Um, I, I, like I said, I, I've seen it once, so... Yeah, that one slipped my memory. That's a good choice. All right. Um, so my number four is Thinner. Oh, yeah. I can't. Oh, my God. I can't believe I didn't pick that movie. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, not only because of the, the fact that, you know, one, you know, he starts the film as a fat guy, but it's also about, you know, him being plus size is like the central part of the movie. So mm -hmm. I figured that was kind of, you know, not necessarily hitting it on the nose, but I figured it was kind of like one of those obvious choices. Absolutely, no, of course. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's such a fun story from Stephen King too. Yeah, I mean, I, I wish the movie would have been um, a little bit better, um, but I mean, that's a discussion for another topic. But yeah, I, I I do like the way that the story plays out. I like the fact that you know he he does suffer, you know, he does come under the curse, and I like the way that that kind of plays out, but. Yeah, yeah, it, it's definitely a, it's definitely a pretty interesting story, and I like the way it, it works out at several points. So, yeah, this was uh, definitely one that I had on my. This was definitely like one of the easy ones that I checked off as soon as I realized the topic. So I know I can't, I, I just can't believe I didn't think of that. <laughs> it's such an obvious one. I'm yeah. glad that I didn't though, because it makes it makes our. I'm glad our. I'm, what I'm really happy is how different our lists are so far too. Because I mean, yeah, like I said, they, um, I I know it, uh we've crossed over on one so yeah so that's that's pretty exciting that we've we've have such uh such lack of crossover because i because i was worried about that considering how few people i could think of and find 
Yeah, I mean, a couple of years of I, I mean, a couple of your choices I would have picked if I would have uh, been aware of them. But yeah, that's, I mean, like, it's like I said at the beginning, you know, just like bringing awareness of it to, to begin with is yeah, some, you know, something that needs to be done. But yeah. So uh, let's uh, go on to our number three. Yes, I went with uh, one of my favorite uh, zombie comedies ever. Uh, I went with uh, Nick Frost from Shaun of the Dead. Oh my God, I can't believe I forgot about him. I, um, <laughs> I, I mean, Nick Frost is a great genre character actor anyway. I mean, <laughs> I, just, I just watched Why Women Kill and he is just such a fantastic uh, addition to that, that show. Um, and, but but I mean Shaun of the Dead is is like is pinnacle uh, Nick Frost in terms of uh, in terms uh. of genre and everything and he he's just he makes the movie I mean uh, it, it, the movie is such a great movie to begin with but then he just really makes it the kind of thing that uh, you want to watch over and over and over again. I feel like you with Spinner right now. Oh God, how did I forget about him? <laughs> <laughs> oh God, that that would have been that would have been um, I would have made my list. Wow, I can't believe I forgot about him. Uh, I'm glad to. Uh, I'm glad to. I'm not the only one then with with a feeling like, oh my god, what was I thinking? <laughs> not yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, especially because uh, my number three is the original Crazy Fat Ethel. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, this is like you know, I it's got to be one of the earlier like shot on video kind of films, but oh, this is just over the top and just campy silly fun just yeah uh, th this is just you know it's one of those kinds of films just you know have some fun and just go with it and that's the kind of i mean that's what that's what we want from those kind of movies i mean from from uh I, I, when was the first one made it was uh um, 60s or 70s yeah because i i get these confused with uh criminally insane mm, yeah yeah, because I, I mean, everything is kind of like, you know, one in the same or it's, it's like the same director, but he used like footage from one into another. And yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm, I, I'm really kind of confused on that whole kind of a thing. But yeah, it's got to be somewhere, I think, in like mid 70s or something like that. Yeah, it's so weird when that happens. Too. I, I, I just recently um, watched for the first time over the holidays, um, Silent Night, Deadly Night 2. And I, I was like. So much of this movie is the exact is is the footage from the first movie, and it's what is going on with it. Yeah, how do these movies? How is that? How is that? How can you get away with that? But apparently you can. So yeah, especially being why well, I was one of those I when I first saw it because I didn't see one yet. I picked up two at first. Oh, so well, I picked up. So yeah, I was like, wait, what the hell? Because <laughs> I, I had the same reaction when I saw one, because I saw two first, so I didn't realize that that's what it was. Oh, and then that, when that I, would be interesting to go backwards then. Yeah, because I saw two first, and then I saw one. And I was like, wait, what the hell? Why is there, you know, I mean, did they reshoot everything? But then why is everything, like, exactly the same, like, down to the camera angle? <laughs> and then it was, and then I looked it up, and it's like, oh, two was the one that, okay, two used the footage. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, that was, that one was kind of weird, but. But it's fun. And if yeah. you got the footage, you might as well use it. So. Exactly. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Number, number uh, two. I think right? we're on our top twos, right? So uh, number two is extremely self-serving. I'll say that up front. But um, I, uh, I, I make, uh, I, 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 I make a genre uh, horror series. Uh, one of the, so I have to pick my cast from Demon Doctor, the series because that's what, one of the points of us making it is because we wanted to create more representation for, uh, for uh, plus size actors in, in genre and horror genre, uh, horror fiction. So, uh, so the actors in Demon Doctor would be my choice for number two. Nice, uh, that's a good one. <laughs> I mean, yeah, maybe it's a little on the nose, but um, I'm, I'm not gonna fault you for including it. Uh, I mean, if you had it number one, maybe, but uh, number exactly. two, I'll I let it slide. Number one, so. <laughs> I mean, number two, I'll let it slide, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That's a good one. Um, my number two is Joey from Friday Five. Oh, yes. I didn't even, so I, I, I didn't even think of the main slasher films, really. I was just, mm. oh, that's such a good choice, though, that now that you yeah. say that. that just, yeah. 
uh, I mean, <laughs> I, I figured this one would have been the one on the been the one on the nose, but mm -hmm. I mean, you know, the, even though he doesn't necessarily have like the big, the biggest amount of screen time, or he's really all that good in the role, mm -hmm. the fact that he's the you know instigating incident that sets everything in motion. I mean, I, I think that kind of played a little bit of it, but also the fact that he's kind of just like taking on like such a p big part of the fandom that he has. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I, I kind of gave him a little bit of extra bounty points for that, but um, I, I thought this one was kind of like the on the nose one, but. That makes sense, totally. Yeah, um, I went with uh, Joey from uh, Friday Five. Excellent. So this is going to be kind of weird because I don't know because we we haven't crossed over, so I don't know like what our number ones are going to be. Yeah, this is going to be interesting. One is, my number one is definitely my uh, when I thought about it, uh, I wanted to go really like who is the who who do I feel is one of the most iconic uh, or at least uh, at least one of the earliest, and so I I went with Victor Bono from Who's Afraid Whatever Happened to Baby Jane and. Uh, the other movies that he did, but specifically whatever happened to Baby Jane. Hmm. <laughs> nice. That's a good one. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought of that. He, uh, uh, I, I love, I love to consider. Uh, I know not everyone considers whatever happened to Baby Jane a horror, but I definitely place it in that realm. And I, I and it's, it's it's genre fiction, if nothing else, at least. And uh, he's definitely an iconic uh, plus size actor from that uh, that film and, and others. So. Huh, that's a good one. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought of that. That's a that's a solid choice. I like it. Thank you. So, my number one. Um, even though I mean this was um our crossover, but um I think we kind of forgot about it. But uh, my number one is Misery. So. Oh yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, um Annie from uh, Misery. Um, I mean yeah, it's not like her. You know, it really plays that big of a deal. But oh god, that performance is just so amazing. Um, a I, I, I was talking about this with another person and you can, there was a moment when I first watched it and it's the moment when she does her off kilter swears. Mm. She says, you know, why did you do the cocky duty, you know, like thing like that. Mm -hmm. And I remember just, I remember my butt clenched and I thought he ain't making out of this. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, yes. Yeah. It, I uh, it was one of those when I was like, okay, he's doomed. He ain't making it. <laughs> and the fact that that happens so early on, but yet they carry the film together, the two of them, amazing. But yeah, the fact that you know, I mean, yeah, she's you know on the larger side. The fact that it's you know it doesn't become a hindrance at all. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you know, the fact that you know nothing's made of it. It's just you know she is who she is. I, I to me, this was an easy choice. So. Absolutely, and 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 she's so she's so uh, topical even now because of the toxic fan culture that we live in. So. Exactly, that's a yeah, that's another one. I mean, you know, she's you know the early toxic fan. Exactly. If she had a TikTok, I can't even imagine what she would do. So. <laughs> oh, but and she, yeah, that's a that's a fabulous choice. I mean, I can't. that's yeah. that's, that, that's a great number one. Yeah. So. <laughs> All right. So uh, before we leave, um, I mean, I know that this was kind of a struggle, but were there any other um, honorable mentions, uh, even if uh, something that came up in the course of conversation, just as a shout out, just to get a little extra eyes on it? Well, I think I think when you uh, when you brought up um, uh, the trauma films, I think I think uh, trauma in general is really, really focuses a lot on bringing in a lot of plus size actors and everything. Lloyd Kaufman seems to really have an affinity for casting uh, interesting and different looking uh, from traditional Hollywood standards people. So I, I, I mean, a huge shout out to trauma films in general for doing that, because that's, that's I, I think, uh, an important uh, uh, thing. I also, um, the one I almost put on there, but I didn't have room for it, was because uh, uh, you, and you said Poltergeist, so I mean, rethink of it again. Um, uh, it thinks Killing, uh, one of the main mm. characters, <laughs> Killing. Mm. Uh, it, it, but he, he is the stereotypical uh, drunk, loud, um, and stupid uh, fat character. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah. Um, for my honorable mentions, um, I if I had if I would have been aware of him, I would have definitely had Nick Frost on there because, I mean, well, he wouldn't have been on. He would have been on the main list, and I would have <laughs> knocked one of my to the honorable mentions. But um, the other one I would have had is. Um, is an actor from uh, from Italian genre films in the late 70s. 
I cannot for the life of me remember or even pronounce his name. I think it's uh, Bruno Diossis or hmm. um, give me 10 seconds here. Let me vamp and figure this out real quick. But um, he's basically a character from um, a lot of people are going to recognize him from the film Strip Nude for Your Killer. So he's basically um, in, in that film, his character is the uh, husband of a fashion agency who's um, being his clients are being stalked by this killer for nefarious reasons. I'm not going to say much more because it's going to be a spoiler. Mm. But um, the thing is, is that this is a uh, I mean, I'm going to, you know, I'm not going to try to be offensive about it, but he's a rotund person mm -hmm. who memorably um, wanders out of a lovemaking session in his tidy whities and brings in a rubber doll and begins making love to it before being killed off. Oh. So, okay, here we go. Um, his name is Franco Diogene. Okay, yeah, Franco Diogene. I, I think that's him. So... Okay. You, I, I, yeah, I, I'm looking at him. Uh, yeah, he definitely is. I've seen his face. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, he looking as looking him up here. He all, was also in a uh, film called Tentacles. Um, I think I remember that one. He's uh, another kind of character. Um, he does like the same kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. And um, he was also in one of the uh, later Lucio Fulci films called *The Sweet House of Horrors*, which I know oh, not okay. a, which I know not a lot of people have seen. But um, yeah, I, I remember. I, like I said, I, I, I've seen him in a couple, but just uh, it's so hard I can never remember his name. But yeah, um, he would have been another guy just because, like I said, you know, characters, not roles. You know, trying to. Mm -hmm come up with this but yeah he was a uh, person that i remember from a couple of these movies so oh for sure yeah yeah i mean like i said uh, you've probably seen him if you've seen like a couple of these films because um yeah a couple of these look like uh, even if they're not like true horror films you've probably would have seen a couple of his other works but yeah um just to you know mention him as well just as an honorable mention so absolutely i think that's a great honorable mention yeah all right. Well, uh, yeah, this was a lot of fun. I mean, you know, research troubles notwithstanding, uh, this was a lot of fun. So uh, thank you. It was you. fun to do the research too, though. So yeah, thank you like it was. Research. Yeah, it, it kind of was because you had to like, you know, really look into it. But um, I really appreciate it. So you mentioned a couple of your projects. Go ahead and uh, shout it out. Let uh, people know where to find it and uh, where to find you. Sure. Um, well, if you're interested in seeing our plus size horror series, uh, it's, you can find Demon Doctor at demondoctor.com. That is uh, season one is out right now, as well as the Christmas episode that we did. Uh, and we're currently in post production of season two. So that should be out um, hopefully by the end of the year. Uh, you can follow us at uh, Sidekick, Produc Sidekick Productions on uh, Instagram. And you can follow us uh, at YouTube at youtube.com slash Sidekick Productions. And if you feel like supporting us at all, you can go to patreon.com slash Psychic Productions and get in uh, on all the action earlier than anyone else in the world. Cool. All right. And um, absolutely, all of those will be linked in the notes down below for you to check out as, uh, check out as you will. So, uh, yeah, this was uh, a lot of fun. Thank you so much for uh, coming on. Thank you so much for having me. This was a blast. I, I love talking about this topic, and I love talking about it with somebody who uh, is it as excited to talk about it as I am? So, which it's hard to find sometimes. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, with that, so we will catch you later and see you on the next episode with another countdown for you all to enjoy.